Okay, so in this case we have a pile driver and it's just a big machine, it's got a, it carries a big weight and it pulls that weight up and then it slams it down and, um, and just pushing piles in for whether you're working on big docks or um, working, preparing for some building or something like that. You'll see them around and they make an awful lot of noise because they're banging things into the ground. And so this one's dropping uh, the onto a pile, the, its mass onto a pile, and we're to determine what's the velocity of the mass that it uses to drive this pile in. All right. So uh, we can say here's our mass right here, and this is, we'll say, is the before, and then the after is just as it hits that right there, hits the pile, and so our height that it drops is right there and um, we're told that that's three meters and so we're starting to put this together a little bit so let's get started into the equation e before equals e after all right and in the before situation we definitely have potential energy we hauled this mass up high or the pile driver did and so that's good and then it's going to release it. And when it releases it, its velocity starts off as zero. So no kinetic energy there. Um, on the other hand, when it drops down, we'll consider this our reference, our it was zero. So the potential energy would be zero at that point. But we would definitely have kinetic energy just as though it, just as it's going to hit that pile. So um, let's carry on with that. So that means before... We have potential energy, and it falls, and that potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy. MGH equals one-half mv squared. And we can rearrange that. The m's cancel out like before. And um, so the bigger the mass that you have on your pile driver, uh, the harder work getting it up, but it's going to hit the same velocity. Um, and after working in forces, you know that uh, the velocity of a very large item, uh, more inertia or more momentum, and it's going to have a bigger impact, but it's going to have the same velocity as it drops down. So we rearrange for V, and so V multiply both sides by 2, 2GH, two and square root. And so we can plug those in, 2, 9.8, and 3. And we can work that out to be, pull out the calculator, 7.7 .7 meters per second. All right. And, of course, there's probably some friction in there, a little tiny bit of wind resistance. But this is the actual speed when it hits is going to be pretty darn close to that. Um, in other words, it's a large mass, a small amount of drop. It's not even going to get anywhere close to a terminal velocity. So, um, yeah, that's a pretty accurate uh, estimate there. Now, uh, we're asked for a second part of this equation uh, or question. How much higher would it, a 100 kilogram mass be lifted in order to strike at the same velocity? All right. So we had a 200 kilogram mass and we're dropping it down a little bit. So, question is, do we have to bring it up higher to get a, the same velocity if it's a smaller mass? Well, let's go back to this step here and make sure we understood what happened there. When we crossed out the mass at this point, we're saying that it doesn't matter what the mass of this uh, pile driver has on it. It's going to reach the same velocity by the time it hits that pile. So um, so B, we can just say, is the same. Uh, masses cancel. In other words, just a justification for how we came to that conclusion. So same as our answer. And uh, justification is just the fact that we recognize that it's independent of the mass.